Hello, it's Mira Reisberg here from the Children's Book Academy and I'm really delighted to be sharing with you a almost wordless book which is called Mostly Wordless by Jed Alexander and it has a few words in it, um, probably not including the contents, it's probably got about 10 words and I find wordless books or nearly wordless books really fascinating. Uh, mostly they're done by author or illustrators, but occasionally they're done by people that, by writers who then have an illustrator make it up. So anyway, let's have a peek at this. Um, let me talk about the cover first. And what Jed's done is he's got a spot varnish. So if you see here the umbrella and the little girl and the little dog and the little puddles in the water, and the title are all gloss. So it's just a varnish that's done as an extra ink on top. And it makes wonderful, wonderful effects. And that's one of the things that's really great about self-publishing is you get to make the book exactly the way you want it. But if you get really successful with a regular publisher, then you've got a good chance of being able to get a spot varnish or a foil which is some, a metallic ink or embossing which is when it comes out the letters are raised or debossing which is when they go in or even glitter so that's pretty cool so it opens up and we have a monochromatic end sheet that's full of action of this little girl in an umbrella on the sea is maybe it's a boy but it's pretty cool these are the end sheets that hold the book together because it's a hardbound book you'll generally find end sheets in a hardbound book but not in a soft cover and that's because of the binding process and evidently when you just do one ink color so this is all monochromatic sort of shades of the one color it's not very expensive at all so that's handy to know. It starts off and Jed has his um, CIP information, Congress in Publication information, on the back of his end sheet and that enables him to just get started right away. He's got a half title here and then for his full title he has a table of contents because this book which is very, very visually driven, obviously, if it's um, mostly wordless. And it's a series of short vignettes, which is also really unusual. And which is part of why it's great that he self-published it, because it's very difficult to get things published traditionally that are not necessarily in the standard sort of, you know, beginning, middle and end, plot driven, lots of action kind of story. Though there is lots of action in this story. We start with Ella and the Pirates. And we're introduced to Ella here and her brothers. And then they go on a boat trip. And lots of action happening with the water and the waves. And they spy an island. Ooh, and there's a shark behind them. Is the shark going to get them? They land, and oh, pirates. So they fight the pirates. Oh, and here they're battling away. And look at his muted palette, how few colors he has, and how the colors themselves are not bright, intense colors. And they find a map. They defeat the pirate, and they find a map. And we've got this really two second stories. One is with the bird and another one is with the little dog that follows them throughout. And I love the way the little dog wears a hat throughout as well. And that must have been challenging to draw because you couldn't exactly have models. So they get the treasure and they take it back in the boat. Yeah, there's all sorts of action happening in the water. And then we find out it's all just imaginative play. 
and they settle down for a lovely picnic lunch. And this book has a, has a lot about play and discovery. Here are the few words. There once was a man whose nose and moustache went off for a midnight snack. While he was sleeping, off they went creeping and never came back. So that one's kind of creepy, but it's, it's well done. I imagine kids would enjoy it. Rainy day. So this, here's his cover art. And notice how it's all facing right to lead your eye and make you want to turn the page. And it's a little boy or a little girl. It's ambiguous. I suspect it's a little boy. Um, that we saw on the end pages or the end sheets. And he, you know, he's using his umbrella as a boat in the ocean and he's off on an adventure with his dog. And it's just fun movement. And here's another one that's a fun movement. It's discovering dance. And here she is again in Girl Meets Ball. Look how fabulous this is. Jed's really great at movement and action. And, you know, haven't we all done this with those balls? So I'm not going to take you all the way through the book, except to say that it's really fun. Oh, here's one of Transformation. I'm just going to, this is the last one I'm going to share. And it's another one about imagination. We're a little girl and she drinks the magic potion. And she turns into a green witch. And so what the book does, it, leads, it leaves lots of room for imagination, for kids to go through the book and discover things and play with it and use, you know, use their own sense of creativity to bring voice to the story besides the voice and the images themselves. So I hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed it. I think it's just really a delight. And thank you for being with us today. Bye.